You know what we didn't talk about the last time? Huh. What happened? I mean, you got cut, you got knocked out, you got taken to the hospital. Big Bob, as we call him, who plays Dredger in Sherlock Holmes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, were, we had some big fight sequence at a, uh, at a shipyard. Mm-hmm. We just been, I think we'd just done too many moves in a row, and he's supposed to come over the top, and I'm supposed to block, whatever. I, anyway, I got some stitches. I wasn't that shocked because he gives so much, like he goes 110%, you know, so I've seen him, you know, one day we were out in the freezing cold and he, and they were yelling, you know, he doesn't look wet enough because he'd just come in from the Thames, I think, and uh, they were spritzing him with water, like it's just this neat little spritz, and he saw this bucket of water beside him and he just grabbed it and threw it over his head, you know, it was freezing cold outside. So he's just so committed, you know. So when I heard he got punched in the face, I was like, oh, he probably asked for it. I'll tell you what's fabulous is even like when you're doing the bare knuckle thing and you hit the guy and his whole face like shakes. It's cool stuff. Guy Ritchie told me to keep hitting him and hitting him harder until I just said, I I won't do it. I'm not going to do this again. And the guy's swelling up a little bit. He goes, I'm all right, son. And I was like, I I know you're all right, but I don't feel good about it. I don't want just a license to... Did you understand that it was going to be this, like, tough guy, Sherlock Holmes? And you're like, wow. Well, they made it pretty clear from the sit-down, from the get-go, that that that's where it was going. But uh, don't forget also that the original books are filled with um, adventure and twists and turns and um, incredibly dark criminals in a very dark and and, and sort of um, uh, exciting um, London. So it was really an opportunity, I suppose, to bring a lot of that source material to life. Let me just say this. I mean, I'm an older guy. You're in crazy shape in this movie. Well, thank you. And I was like, wow, man, that really messes it up for all of us. Like, (laughs) now I have to actually be in shape. It messes it up for me, too, because I I may never be in that shape again. At least I have it encapsulated. I can say, last year, at around this time, I look like that. Now what? I mean, you know, I feel comfortable in my little gut now. I can, you know, and I'm like, look at this. Unfortunately, Thin is back in. He's in fantastic shape, yeah. I mean, he's you've seen that picture of his, like, 12 abs. He works hard at it, too. He's a great martial artist, and, um, you know, he's always doing something physical. How did you get the performances out of folks? Because there are times where there's so much going on. How do you choreograph all that? I mean, that's like your specialty, but how do you choreograph all that madness? I try not to overthink my job too much. And I think if you do, if you spend too much time thinking about it, uh, you'll get your knickers in something of a twist. But I think if you, if you cross each bridge as it presents itself and stick your fingers in your ears when you just don't want to deal with the bridge, somehow uh, those bridges manage to get crossed all by themselves. And uh, I found that if you've got a pr- a ten, ten issues, if you take care of five, then the other five take care of themselves. I think Guy's greatest contribution besides being the right director for the job was that he creates a, a tone on set. It's just like any, any workplace, any environment where you have to spend uh, many hours, you know, the person who's, who's charged with being the, uh, the head honcho, uh, things tend to go according to what mood they set. And Guy's was very light and very kind of like fun and, and, and trusting and excited. How was it working with Robert? Because he can be such a joker. So when they say cut, what's it like? I corpse a lot more than he did. I laughed a lot more than he did, just because he, he, he can throw in the, the most eccentric and brilliant, impulsive pieces of uh, uh, um, uh, ad-libbing or, or just ways of reading dialogue um, and keep his cool. Where, but try, on the receiving end of that, it's very hard to keep your cool. His mind moves at uh, a rate that I cannot keep up with. I suppose that's one of the reasons I thought he'd make such a good Sherlock Holmes is I couldn't really understand what he was talking about, but other people told me it was clever and intellectual. So uh, I let that try and percolate its way into the narrative. When the cameras stopped rolling, how much fun was Robert and Jude and all those guys? Cause, I mean, Robert can really kind of go. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's quite amazing to watch, actually. He would flip into his character in um, Tropic Thunder, but he's as Sherlock Holmes, and then the Australian underneath, you know? So it was so, I mean, he'd so, we'd spend lunch hours where he would just be that guy. I got to hear this. I don't know if I can do it anymore. I was doing it the other day. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
the Lincoln Osiris stuff, for me, is best left where it was because it's all downhill from there. Right, 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 and right. even Sherlock, like on this tour, people say, will you do the English accent? And I go, I will, but then you'll realize that I only do it very well when I'm being coached. But to answer your question, yes, I entertained the troops. I was a one-man USO.